Hello, boys and girls, welcome back to Factorio. My name is Halson C, and since last episode, we are doing some research again. However, I think it will be still quite a while until we can use all the new fancy stuff that we are researching. Because before getting there, like nuclear power, there are some things that we need to take care of. And the first thing is our power setup. If we run at this level we are good but we are not always running at this level uh, because um, we have not enough water supplied to our secondary power station down here and there are you can see only the the, the front are running because basically these tanks are empty so what i'm thinking we can do here is let's have this station a bit bigger and you see i also added um, a cool line here because our uh, water drain, that one, uh, frequently run out of uh, fuel. And that then really is uh, a problem. So, because if the, the water drain does not have any water delivered, then we don't have any power so what I intend to do here is move this station forward to down here so we can have a second train waiting in the back so once the first train unloads uh, moves out of the way then the the second train can move in and also unload and I need to uh, uh, chuck some wood here to make room. Um, then we need uh, probably an, uh, an additional water train. So we can actually ensure that there are two trains uh, sitting there delivering water. And after that, we probably also have to see that we can load the, the water trains fast enough um, in order to uh, not hinder this this whole process here. I moved the whole station down here and we have space for one train unloading plus two trains waiting and I have two more trains here uh, that we can send off to fetch water, but we will see uh, the the amount of water that we have in here that soon drains before the next train can can even arrive. And now you see, well, we have quite a few trains that could unload and pump water here. Um, we only have one station for loading water and that of course is the next bottleneck that we have to fix. We are here at the station where we fill up our water trains and there are some things that we can do. We can try to squeeze in two loading stations. Um, and that's probably best if we uh, do it this way, where we have this going back as, as far as possible. If that train station, then we can 
this one. Uh, let's skip this. Move that back to here. And then we should be able to have exit there. Basically, we then want to have another station here. Hmm. That's the closest that we can get. that station one closer. Oh. We have to disrupt this. In order to get this going properly. Then this will be the same station here. Water loading, yes. This will go. And then there. That will be water loading. Train limit of one. Signal there and there and there and then here we have this and this. And we want to have pump here, pump here. Um, we need the power. We also need the water and we will have water tanks sitting here so that would then allow us to have more water pumps on that side so let's also have that there and we need or I need more water underground water pipes but as you can see with uh, with tanks here we can fill this these tanks up even though there is no train sitting here and that should fill up the trains way faster can now it slows down a bit because the tanks are emptying but if the tanks are full we can really load the train fast um, and uh, uh, reduce the amount of time the train is sitting here so let me grab a few more underground uh, uh, pipes so we can have two pumps on each or two water pumps 
here on the waterfront, supplying water, and then maybe we can even think of a setup like this, where we double load the tanks, or even triple load the tanks. Uh, that probably needs a bit of reworking down here. But I think we can manage. With two water pumps on each loading station uh, on the waterfront, that means we can pump... Um, uh, what is it that one of these can pump? Uh, 1200. So that's 24 liters per second. And then we have uh, three pumps loading the train. And you can see the loading now is, is really fast. And that is certainly helped by the fact that these tanks are almost full. And if we look at the, at the power station here, we can see these tanks are now also not empty. Well, they are not full, but they are not empty. And that's the, the, the important thing here, because that allows us to run this power station full tilt. And up here, uh, we can also have this going. That works well. We did have a bit of uh, a dip in, in power supply, which uh, uh, caused the miners to slow down, uh, which meant we did not have enough coal to feed all the power plants, and it's a vicious cycle. But that's sorted. So the next thing, um, yeah, maybe, maybe let's have a look at the, our research because it's all done. And on the way to our robots, we need uh, lubricants so we can have uh, the electric engine and so on. So that means uh, we need to turn our, our attention to our oil processing uh, in uh, order uh, to basically get the heavy oil and the light oil uh, in there uh, but we did not finish the setup completely we are missing one refinery here and uh, we have laid out the, the, the things for for the cracking um, but have not yet hooked that up as well so I think what we will do is uh, produce a bit of landfill. We can have uh, um, an assembly machine here uh, somewhere um, producing that landfill. So we can fill in the land to complete this square. Have here a bit more land for the last refinery and then we can go about uh, with adding in the missing pieces down here that being the oil cracking uh, the lubricant and uh, also the uh, um, the the what is it can't remember the sulfuric acid because we will need that uh, if we want to go nuclear to uh, to set uh, to build up uh, to mine the uranium and then of course we also need uh, stations um, to pick up uh, lubricant sulfuric acid and probably light oil I'm not sure if we have anything where we need uh, heavy oil. But we should have the room to, uh, to squeeze in all these uh, stations because uh, from a setup we will need, don't need much more space than, than we have used here. So we can have a different station layout than we have there. 
But let me first finish up the, the, the layout with the line fill and so on. The rail square is in place. The refinery is uh, upgraded to the new recipes. Uh, we have everything else hooked up. I even started down here with the loading stations, but I did overlook something uh, when thinking about uh, the sulfuric acid. And for that, we actually need a bit of iron uh, and not only sulfur. So that's why we have here an unloading station for iron ore. And I think uh, if we manage to uh, to get this out on this side and uh, entry here, we can have a bit of a waiting bay here on this side uh, for all the uh, platforms. I think for iron we don't need, but for the other three it would be nice to, to have some waiting base there ready. If we share the waiting base, we have to be a bit careful um, because we could have, for example, we have three stations, we could have three waiting bays, but if we then have two trains, for example, uh, for a lubricant in there, that would mean that only one other train uh, uh, can, can come in there. Um, so I'm not quite sure how, how well that would work out, but we will figure things out. And as for production of sulfuric acid, uh, this is basically, uh, we need a bit of, of iron here on the side, two uh, furnaces uh, will be sufficient. And then we have the ratio three to one which should be uh, good for us. I think we only need um, at least for now we only need a one chemical plant for sulfuric acid because uh, at this point we will only need it for uh, mining the uranium. Later on we will need it for the uh, blue circuits as well but I think we then have a bit of space up here uh, where we can add a bit more and in here we should have room for more furnaces. The setup is completed all that's missing now is a bit of uh, iron ore and if we look at it, we have seven stations, we have seven trains. Um, however, trains usually tend to go to stations that are closer. So the stations that are farther out get less frequent trains. And especially with the setup, um, we might end up in a situation where these uh, outward uh, stations seldom get a, a train. So what we can actually do here is hook up the, the chests and say um, enable disable if we have iron ore uh, more than we have six chests that hold 9600 um, let's make that that's a bit less than uh, uh, 6000 so If we have more than 50k in there, then disable. Um, I 
respectively enable if we have let's. Okay. And if we would have an insert there. And no missing pipe and a pump. We can actually produce sulfuric acid. And down here, I reordered the things a bit uh, because we will probably only need one lubricant train. So that one does not go through uh, the uh, waiting bay, but comes directly off the, uh, the line here on this side. Um, want signal there. Then here, here, and have another there. Well, that does not do that much. Uh, but the other trains there, we have quite a few waiting bays. Uh, so we can actually say, um, have two trains go to these stations. And here, of course, we have the limit of one train. But that's it. We have sulfuric acid. Uh, with that, we can then at least think about doing some uranium mining. But uh, in between, I will go around uh, at least for the, for the iron uh, or stations. And, and hook those up. Maybe something similar for copper would also be beneficial. And uh, then looking at the pollution cloud, uh, probably we have to deal with uh, these biter nests first. And if we want to tackle this uranium field, maybe uh, uh, this nest down here uh, probably over the uh, water there are more nests uh, that would get aggravated by uh, us uh, mining there so maybe uh, this field would be a better choice well we will see that's a problem for next time hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in when we tackle that. Until then, goodbye.